Wow. The whole movie, and I, I don't care. We're starting this off with cussing because this is an open forum, and holy shit, I've got ref, I've got me, Ref Quinn, on my show. Holy <laughs> shit. This is starting to pop. Don Kincaid with my very, very special guest during Zebra Week. It's Ref Quinn. Thank you so much, my friend. Hey, you're welcome, man, and I'm excited too. And you know, thank you for having me. I uh, I seem to have a little extra time on my hands these days, so your timing was perfect, man. Let's let's talk, let's chat. You know, I, I'm in the midst of doing about 70 interviews in about a month and a half time, so it, everybody's got some time to kill. So let's start right off with you and your family are well through all of this, correct? We are, and thank you very much for asking, and I hope you and your family are as well. Absolutely. We're, we're dodging. Now, my last name is Kincaid, but I don't know. It's a, I know it's not a joke, but I like to lighten it up a little bit, so I'm dodging and weaving the Kincovid. <laughs> the Kincovid. <laughs> I mean, do you got um, so, so anyways, um, what I like, who's that? That's my <laughs> other <have>. half. <laughs> we got, see, look at that. I've never really kind of met. Uh, Ref Quinn outside the ring much. We've already, you've, the fans and I, we've already met the better half of Ref Quinn. Is that who that is? That's absolutely my better half. That's, that's yes, my fiance. Ref Quinn, that's amazing. We've already shared a bunch already. This, look at that smile. Ref Quinn, uh, uh, this has been an amazing week already. I've had L Ref, I've had Ref Mickey Stripes just before you, uh, which they both say hello. I've had Ref hello, Bill Pat. Thompson. Of Ref Bill Thompson, which me and him, I kind of, I have a hate hate relationship with that guy. He kicks me in my shins. He hits me with kendo sticks, and uh, I just booed the piss out of him. We have that kind of a relationship. There I don't know go, why. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but then I I just talk to uh, Ref Blue Shoes, my one of my most favorite refs in the universe, Ref Blue Shoes Gina. And I know you've got a connection with Gina, so I would love to start right there, if that's okay. Yeah, man, you can start wherever you want. Gina's cool. She's a good ref. Uh, she made her Beyond Wrestling debut uh, a couple months ago. I uh, had another previous engagement, and uh, being the senior referee, they let me decide who to pick, and uh, I think she was a perfect pick. You know, she uh, she's talked about you like a, a mentor. And uh, I, I don't know if you realize this or not, my friend. I've been watching you for a bunch of years, and I know we don't get to chit-chat on the outside. Um, because uh, girls and boys, uh, Ref Quinn, talk about pro. <laughs> Look at, there's his feet. Man, we're meeting the better half. We're meeting the feet. Ref Quinn's just sharing a whole lot tonight. Uh, but he is one of the most. Re Look at the, uh, dude, we're, we are getting into your guns. I tell you that. Uh, he is one of the most respected, and I don't know if you know this, one of the most respected. <laughs> oh, my God. This is going to be a riot. Maybe. <laughs> Ooh, <man. laughs> uh, you are one of the most respected referees in the industry, not in just our area, but all over the place. Do you realize that, my friend? I'll tell you what. That's humbling. Thank you. Thank you. you. Really appreciate that. But but you are because I talk to so many different wrestlers, uh, male, female. I talk to referees. I talk to promoters. Um, and I've never once, uh, as Mizzy, uh, Mickey Stripes previously said, never once have we ever heard a bad word about Ref Quinn. Nobody. And I mean, there's a lot of chit chat in wrestling. I'm sure you know. Uh, but not. Absolutely. About <laughs> uh, yeah, a bit, but not about Ref Quinn. You have a uh, major mark in our industry, and uh, you are very looked up to. And I want to present that to the fans and yourself, if you don't know, uh, because uh, being a referee, not an easy job. They think you can go in there, count one, two, three. That's not the way it works. Uh, so you uh, doing the grind and going to, I don't even, can you tell us how many promotions you've actually worked at? Oh, since I started, it has been a lot. <laughs> it's been a lot. Um, I, I, I didn't keep track of my matches when I first started 
unfortunately. Uh, but I've I've worked for a lot of promotions. I've refed a lot of matches. Right now, I work for three promotions, uh, full time, so to speak, if you will. Uh, Northeast Wrestling, Beyond Wrestling, and Chaotic Wrestling. No specific order there. Um, they're all great companies. They all take good care of me. Uh, I train at the New England Pro Wrestling Academy under Brian Fury. Uh, great guy, great trainer, um, and he's just it's just a great it's a great thing I get to do. Uh, it's not a secret that I'm a little on the older side than most of the other refs, but no, yeah. no, nah, nah, believe me, the age thing does it when you, when you get to a certain level and there's the signatures involved and stuff, trust me when I tell you the age thing matters, but that, that's okay. That's okay. Hey, you pull it off with ease because, uh, ref Quinn is in very high demand in any promotion. If you were, if anybody were to mention ref Quinn, the promoter would be uh, very ecstatic to get you on their events and their cards. Um, you've named three major. Oh, go ahead. What, what, uh, three major organizations in our area: Chaotic, Northeast Wrestling, and uh, Beyond. You're working for some of the most top companies, not in just the United States, but in the entire industry. Um, You've been doing this for how long, please? If you could, <laughs> the better half. <laughs> yeah. How long have you been doing this for? I started in November of 2011. Uh, I started up at a company that's now APW, was then called Wrestling Star Wars. Uh, okay. I did, yeah, I did a little bit of security work with them. Uh, this will be a fun fact that a lot of people don't know. I had my own little security company up there called Steel Security. Um, yep. And, uh, I always say thank you to the two people that helped him when I first started and, uh, you know, God rest his soul, big Woody. He was very helpful. Uh, Joe Moakley. Those, those are the first guys to, uh, let me in the ring. And, uh, when I say let me in the ring, I'm talking right out of the front row, not the front row. Actually, I was doing security and I had, you know, uh, gym pants on. They threw me a ref shirt and said, how would you like to ref a match? And I said, well, I've never done this before, and uh, <laughs> but I've been watching wrestling since I was a kid, and my first match that I ever refed was a West Newbury street fight between Joe Moakley and Big Woody, and I'll never forget it. Big Woody had a trash can hanging over his head to smash Joe Moakley, and I stood in front of him, and I said, you better put that down, and he said, I, well, I can't say what he said, but... Uh, <laughs> hey. You can't, Ref Quinn. This isn't the open forum. Let's talk like friends. Uh, he said, get the fuck out of the way before yeah. I hit you with it. Yes. <laughs> and I, I quickly re I quickly realized how how things work. And, you know, I realized that I was basically there to count the pin at the end of the show. I mean, at the end of the match. And uh, one thing led to another. And that, that's where it all started, though. That's where it all started. And like, hey. and that Years ago, I don't know, nine, nine years ago. That's a beautiful story. Uh, a, a street fight, your very first one, it's got to be a little nerve wracking, no? Oh, it was, yeah, especially when, you know, you know, <laughs> Big Woody, as you know, was a, was a larger gentleman. And uh, Joe Moakley, he, you know, he's uh, kind of a smaller little skinny, <laughs> un bald, ugly. No Wait, I, you just described me. What are you doing to me? <laughs> I'm just having fun, man. I'm just having fun. <laughs> well, please me. Hey, Joe Lopez, every time you want to go, brother, I'll tell you what. You're somebody I ain't afraid of. <laughs> serious note, Joe was very helpful to me when I first started. Um, as far as even, even, even going to other promotions, I, I would reach out for a little bit of advice. Joe's a good dude, man. He... You know, they they let they helped me out a lot, um, and without them, I, I wouldn't be doing this. And as far as that other stuff, <laughs> I'm totally just joking. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but going in from being a civilian into the wrestling world, uh, just like that, out of the clear blue sky, uh, what what happens from there though? Do you like? Did you feel that buzz? And you're like, man, that was some cool shit. This is something I gotta do, or was it like just a one night thing and you came back to it? How did you kind of pursue that? No, nah, it was the first thing that you said is is once I was in there, man, and I, I felt that 
that feeling of being in the ring from watching it for so many years. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's look into this. Uh, and then you got you got to remember too that wrestling is built on a lot of respect, mm -hmm. you know, and that's why people wipe their feet mm -hmm. before they get in the ring because you don't want to bring the dirt from the outside into the ring where people before us, you know, did what they had to do to get us to where we are today. You know, um, yeah, it's all about respect. And, and as Ref Quinn said, and I don't know if everybody that and I got to apologize if just my parents are watching this, that's my bad. I really I am so sorry. So I hope more than my parents are watching this. So basically, uh, uh, to the boys and girls that are watching, uh, when you wipe your feet on the edge on the outside of the ring, that is part of the uh, the wrestling etiquette. That is shown by each uh, man or uh, man or woman that comes in that ring, ring announcer, referee, or wrestler. They all wipe their feet as part of that etiquette that Ref Quinn has spoken about. Uh, the camaraderie, the brotherhood, the sisterhood behind that curtain. Uh, is that something that you just kind of joined right in, or was that hard to get into that click? Uh, it's funny you say that. <laughs> Being a front row guy, you know. Everybody knows that I used to be that heckler guy. Oh, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how that that that's basically how I knew Brian Fury from him doing his pose when he would get in the ring, get, standing up on uh, doing his rope thing, and he'd look at me and just smug, and I'd look at him and I'd say something like "nice guy" or something, and he'd say "get a hair" or something. But the one guy, the one guy, Sean Gorman. This is this is a true story, or as in wrestling, we say a shoot. Shoot. First night in chaotic wrestling, he walked by me in the locker room, and he stopped, and he backed up, and he said, aren't you on the wrong side of the guardrail? <laughs> Meaning, I should be in the front row as a fan. And I said, no, I'm on the right side of the guardrail. And he looked at me, and he shook my hand, and he goes, hi, I'm Sean. And that's how I met him. And it wasn't easy, you know, again, being that front row heckler, you know, mm -hmm. now I'm in the locker room. And when I first started, I didn't go to wrestling school. A lot of people, this is stuff a lot of people probably don't know. I didn't go to wrestling school right out of the gate. I just oh. started reffing. And another person that needs a big, 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 big thank you is Anthony Green. He helped me get my first booking and he's still helping me to this day, this mm -hmm. day. You, you, did you see my my um my proposal for beyond the, the proposal if, video if there's any media that ref quinn puts out i always stalk i, I mean i always follow your page <laughs> all the time well he was very instrumental in what i had to say that night he was very helpful to me um he's a good guy man he uh he got me my first real booking down in uh i think it was f SW or something down in some abandoned warehouse down in like Fall River or something. Some cold building with like a space heater or something. Um, but yeah. <laughs> you, you know how they say uh, uh, the field of dreams? Build it and they will come. Uh, I, I don't know if everybody's aware, but there are some places you go to wrestling, you're like, oh, what the fuck? They, they, this is where you wrestle? Uh, they you put a ring anywhere, <laughs> people will come. We don't give a shit. <laughs> uh, that that's true, but but to, to elaborate back on that, I wasn't trained at the beginning. Yeah, uh, please. You know the boys. You know they uh, got a little bit of uh, heat, as they say. You know, and that's where I met Jason Rumble, the Boston Bad Boy, as he used to be called. Uh, I met him in the gym, and when I say I met him in the gym, I we had our headphones in, and I literally bumped into him. We were going for a preacher machine, and I looked at him. I said, "We work in, sure." And then we started talking. And he said, "Hey, you, ever, you know, you ever watch pro wrestling?" I'm like, "Been watching since I was a kid." And he goes, "Yeah, come with me." And he went to what I thought was the used to be the leg room, and he opened up the door, and there was a uh, wrestling ring in there. And so next thing you know, he's like, "Well, I run a wrestling school." And the next thing you know, I'm over there training with him in his wrestling school at the Belltown Club. But he actually, he, he, he got me in there, but my day-to-day -day trainer was Bo Douglas. I'm sure you know him. He was very, very, Bo, very helpful. Yeah, Bo knows. 
Exactly. Bo does know. Bo yep. taught me all the fundamentals. He taught me all the basics as far as like not basics, more than that. He taught me a lot of things. He taught me how to uh, how to act on the road, how to live on the road. Uh, we went up to Canada a bunch of times when I first started. I did like a 28-day tour up there, uh, like a 15-day tour. Oh, yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. Bo was very instrumental uh, in, in a lot of things I had to do with wrestling. It was very helpful. And then, uh, yeah, I trained there for a couple of years, and then I just felt things were plateauing, and uh, I heard so much about New England Pro Wrestling Academy. And uh, I messaged Brian Fury. I uh, didn't really know him. I just messaged him and said, I'd like to come up to a class on Tuesday. And he responded back, see you then. I went up halfway through, I stopped. I said, where do I sign up? And I've been there ever since. And and, and this isn't any bullshit, man. I love going there. Um, the ride there is a, is a bitch from where I live for some reason. I live 20 minutes away, but it takes over an hour. Um, but I love it. Um, and the reason I love it is because Fury is a great trainer. And yes, I'm a little biased because he's my trainer, but he's a great trainer. Just look at the lineage of the school and the people that he's trained that are in, you know, other bigger places now. Um, he's a great guy. and He doesn't treat me any different than anybody else. He'll yell at me, you know, get to those shoulders, old man. And he's, he, but more than, more than like a trainer, you know, he's my friend and, you know, I can reach out to him, you know, if the certain, even if it's another an issue with an, something else with another company. He's always the first person I, I message or whatever. Uh, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. Well, in, in wrestling, I speak about a support team because without, uh, may it be <laughs> the better half, which we've met. That's amazing. Um, we, uh, it, either the better, <laughs> hey, better half, what's happening? Um, uh, by the way, what, what's she, is she crocheting something? What do we got going on over there? No, uh, she's, uh, She's got it. She's watching a uh, a movie. What well, she oh, was. Okay. All right, all right. Uh, you know, I, I'm just I'm nosy. That's all. You know. That's um, all right, man. I'm, I'm Kevin. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what we like to talk is about is it takes a support system to uh, persevere in wrestling, and it doesn't matter. Again, if you're an announcer, a referee, a manager, a wrestler, does not matter. Uh, you seem to have the better half. Uh, great support system right there. Well, let me tell you something. All bullshit aside, without this support system here, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. I'm gone a lot. I'm mm -hmm. away a lot. My schedule at work's busy. You know, the gym, everything else. She never complains. Um, she it, she just takes the best care of me. I'm a very, very lucky guy because I'll tell you, say this as delicately as I can uh, when I'm on the road let's just say not everybody has the same support that I have mm -hmm. and I would, I would hate to leave my house being gone for an entire weekend knowing that my fiance is pissed that I'm mm -hmm. going on the road that, that would suck you know mm -hmm. what she's very supportive 150% and that that is something that makes uh, the men and women uh, excel in wrestling because without that uh ref quinn i gotta say without that wrestling is hard enough to uh be established in but without a support system and when when you got some shit going on about wrestling and you just need to even sometimes just to vent and it doesn't matter if they understand it or not they're there to support you and and that's the shit that helps you persevere yeah and you know what that's why i got you know i'm sure you know mike verna mike mm -hmm. verna's a good friend of mine He's a guy that I can just go sit next to and just start venting. And he sits there, he listens to me, hugs me, and says, I love you, Queenie. I said, I love you too. But you know, there's a couple other people that are very, very helpful to me. Um, there's two people that I go to if I'm in a situation, if I just don't know what to do or whatever the case is. And that's Josh Briggs. Um, I go to him a lot. Um, I can love him. Yeah, I like. He's a great. I love him too, man. I hug, he's a great guy. Um, you know, I had a conversation with him at the last show that I did about something that I thought maybe it was the right thing for me to do, and after talking to him, it wasn't, and I'm glad I didn't. Uh, JT Dunn, I go to him a lot because he, man, these wrestlers they got they got fifty thousand names for the same move, and sometimes they'll tell me their finish, and I'll be like. Hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll Google it or whatever. And if I don't know what it is, JT is my go-to guy for that. Or Anthony Green. Anthony Green. Let me tell you something. I'll put him up against anybody as far as a wrestling encyclopedia. This mm-hmm. kid knows more about my career than I do. <laughs> you ask him, he's a former referee too, but you ask him about anything about wrestling, say, you know, what was the fourth match in WrestleMania 9? And he'll tell you. What was the main event at WrestleMania 3? What was the main event at WrestleMania 28? He'll tell you. You know, who was the chaotic champion in 2004? He'll tell you. You know? Yeah, he's amazing. Oh, it's, it's crazy, man. He, he's an encyclopedia. You know, I did have the pleasure. Um, he came to a show at Battlefront in Ludlow. And I had the pleasure, because I go there pretty early. Um, I kind of do promos and stuff, these little Kincaid file things. And I put them on center ring for Thursdays. But he was there, and I had the, the pleasure of seeing him in the ring, just chit-chatting with the guys. Um, and he would present stuff like, uh, so if you were to do this, what would you do? And they would give it to him. And then he'd go, well, this is what I kind of do. Not saying that it's right, but this is what I personally like to do. They would get into this little chain thing. And the, the guys were like, oh, no shit. That's something I would have never thought about. He goes, again, that's what I like to do. I'm not saying you have to, but it's yeah. just a different thing to think about uh, yeah. from your, your next move ahead, your next three moves ahead. Man, what a privilege it was for me just to sit back and look at that. hairs right there, baby. Yeah. What a privilege it was just to see him do that stuff. He's a good dude, man. In wrestling, we got brothers and good brothers, so to speak. And he's a good brother. You know, he's a mm-hmm. good dude. You know, uh, you know, there's somebody else, you know. <laughs> I'm sure you know my alter ego, the dirty daddy, Chris Dickinson, right? That dude's a menace. <laughs> Well, he, his name is Fitty, you know, and he's probably one of my favorite people. I, I absolutely love reffing for him. I love reffing for him. I remember one of the matches I checked. He, it looked like he took something pretty big, you know, and these guys, they, they're, they're professionals. And I just checked on him. I said, are you okay? Get the fuck out of my face. You know, he, he's tough, man. He just, you know, he's, he's good, too. He's a, he's a good dude, man. I got hurt a while ago, and he was the first one there. Nice. That hey, that's the love that has to be there in wrestling because of there. It takes so much and so many people just to make one show. Never mind a continual promotion. Uh, so that love has really got to be there between everybody that makes that dance work. And uh, that's great to hear that you have that kind of connection with yeah. some of the wrestlers. That's very cool. Yeah, and I tell you what, you know who I travel with the most and I spend the most time probably with is Rich Palladino. He was, he, yeah, great guy. He works for two of the three companies that I work for. I mm-hmm. travel with him. Oh, actually, you know, I'm sorry. Oh, man, my bad, Randy. When I announce the companies that I work for, I totally forgot Limitless Wrestling. I'm sorry. You know why I forgot it? Because mm. I have so much fun up there, and it's so just a pleasure. But anyway, no, I work for Randy Carver Jr. up there. He's a great guy. Um, yep. He's been he's been actually giving me some uh, big opportunities, and uh that's another great company up there. I, I, I apologize for forgetting that. That's okay. That's okay. Um, now, again, you've named uh, the best on the independent scene today, and it's so flourishing. There's so much wrestling. There's so many promotions across the globe, not just the United States. Mm-hmm. Um, you as a referee, and, and you've come up, and now, you know, again, I, I – I say it because it's true, but you're one of the most respected on in the entire industry. Uh, is it a little different? Because you have uh, called matches for endless, countless, uh, big, huge names. Not only that have moved on to the bigger platforms, WWE, AEW and such, but also when companies bring in those names you get to ref some of the most amazing men and women in our industry. Do you still yeah. find it nerve, nerve-wracking at all? Uh, well, nerve-wracking to a point because, as, as my trainer told me, you know, when the nerves go away, it's time to go home. But, yes, I am nervous before every match in a certain way. You know, I have my own little prayer thing that I do before a match. I have my own little warm-ups and stuff like that. But yeah, I get nervous, but now it's in a good, positive way. 
Yeah, and and you are a seamless ref. You have to be one of the most polished, uh, just all around. Um, you've taken your craft very, and, and this is this is the thing, though, uh, boys and girls. You have to take when it comes to wrestling. You can't have have uh, hazard it. You can't just go in with it's a recreational thing. I mean, you can maybe, but when you want to be established, uh, Ref Quinn, very established, very uh, lots of time, like he's spoken, lots of sacrifices from the family and, and such things. You miss a lot of stuff. Uh, so being on that road, you've been on the road uh, many, many a time, obviously. What I like to do personally we won't tell anybody. Is there a, a cool little road story that sticks out that you can make us laugh, ha ha, and share with the fans that really kind of, you know, even if there's a three or four, bring them on. We love them all. Yeah, I'll tell you a really good road story. I was, tra I was traveling with my buddy Ralphie. <laughs> we, we, uh, all right, I was traveling with my buddy Ralphie for for a bigger company, if you will. We were running the, uh, we were driving the box truck. We had the guide rails and all his merch and stuff, and we uh, we had a little run in with a uh, Mexican restaurant, and uh, let's just say it didn't sit too well with us. So we we pulled over to the nearest rest stop or gas station, if you will, and Ralph got out of the car, clenching his cheeks, man, like. He's, the dam was about to burst. And he, he went to knock, went to open the door, and the door, the door was locked. <laughs> and he bangs on the window. <laughs> and the guy opens, like, the drawer, you know, when you walk up at night, and they open the drawer and put the money in. And he says, can I use the restroom? <laughs> and he says, the restroom is no, is no working. He goes, what the fuck? So he ran over by the dumpster. <laughs> He's gonna kill me for this one. We're gonna we're gonna end that story right there. So he he trucks he does his duty behind the behind the garbage can. Uh, Oh shit! Behind the dumpster, and all of a sudden they hear shit. I got no toilet paper, <laughs> which is pretty fitting right about now, because he wouldn't have any now either. So I think I threw him a roll of paper towels or something. But anyway, but anyway, he was a great guy to travel with. He was. He we fought <laughs> like brothers, man. We we fought like brothers, man. And you think that story is funny? If you were there. I, I'm telling you right now, I almost, oh my, I, I yeah, it was, that was a good one, man. That was a good one. Uh, Ref Quinn, this is why uh, I, I try uh, to peel back the curtain because uh, when the hell would the fans be able to hear a cool little road story from Ref Quinn, man? I mean, thank you so much for sharing. That was amazing. I'm getting a text message. I wonder who it's from. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, the referees that you're associated with on the circuit, uh, again, a tight-knit family? Very tight-knit, very tight-knit. I work with uh, – I have a lot of my favorites. I work with the same people all the time. At Chaotic, I work with Rich Bass, who's one of the best around. He's actually my mentor um, at – NEW, I work with my buddy Vinny Lax and my bu buddy Eric Stefanowitz, uh, both superior refs. And then uh, Limitless, I work with, uh, let's see, Tony P when he's up there, who's one of my favorites. Uh, Eric Greenleaf. Uh, let's see, who else? What did I forget? Why do I feel like I'm forgetting somebody? <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. Oh, uh, my goodness. You, 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 know, you know, I forgot my buddy, man. Like, I've repped so much at Beyond Wrestling with Steve Domingue. When I tell you the dude's literally, legitimately like my brother. I mean, we spent so much time together. We did, what, 31 weeks of Uncharted Territories every week. The kid is a great support system. And here's something a lot of people probably don't know. And I'll share this with you real quick. Okay. Right before this pandemic happened and all that stuff, I was this close 
So maybe calling it quits. Because, well, you know, I had a little hair across my ass because, you know, I can't get that contract with the signature and the, the good amount of money. But that's okay because, you know, why I realized I already made it, man. I work for the best companies. I get to work for the best people. Uh, one of my favorite people in the world that I've ever ref for. This is no disrespect to anybody else. This just, we all, it's just, it is what it is. Donovan died back is probably my number one favorite guy that I've ref for. You know, I love refing for Fury, JT Dunn, all those guys. But the matches that I did with Dijak and all the traveling that I did with them, and then what him and a few other people did for me when I got hurt in Ohio, they did that fundraiser for me to help me. That dude, man, he's got a heart that's bigger than him, and I'm glad to see him down in NXT kicking ass. And he'll be on TV for a long time to come, and he'll make a lot of money, man. I just yeah. had to throw in there. Absolutely. Um, I was speaking to Ref Miggy on uh, when, when you get to ref with bigger names, it's a, it seems to be a different feel be with him because he's just starting. He's only like a year and a half, maybe, maybe two years deep. And uh, I told him that you were coming on and he's like, hey, tell him Ref Miggy said hello. So I had to relay that message first off. Uh, but the second one, uh, you – uh, deal with so many big names, seeing them go from where they were in the rings that you've worked, going on to those bigger platforms, that's got to just feel so like so good to see those men and women really stride and get to that plat, you know, that point. No, oh, yeah, it, I'll tell you what, it's uh, it's crazy if you go back and one particular promotion in Beyond Wrestling. You look at all the people that I've refed there, uh, refed uh, for there that are on TV now. It's insane. I've refed for the Young Bucks probably, I don't know, probably eight or nine times. I've screwed up their super kicks, probably seven of them. That's probably why I'm not in AEW. But that's another, that's a whole other story. I mean, I've refed for Kevin Steen. I mean, Samoa Joe. I mean, honestly, the list just goes. And I'm not trying to name drop. I'm just no, telling no. the fact. Um, the biggest match that I've ever refed. What do you think the biggest match I've ever refed is? I was front row cage match Cody Rhodes versus uh, Kurt Angle. Yeah. Wrestle Fest. That was my shit. Dude, let me tell you something. They they call they eat, they texted me that day, and I said I hope your cardio is up. And I said I'm ready. And they said, Well, I sure hope you are. And I got there. And everything, I didn't know anything. And then all of a sudden, they pulled me aside and say, hey, look, man, we got you in this match tonight. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, wow. And then, you know, I'm walking down towards the ring, and I see this cage. And, I'm, and a lot of people who have never been in a ring with a steel cage, the hardest part of a steel cage match in the indies is getting in the ring because of the way the cage and the ropes are set. That's a bitch, man. But anyway, I'm in there, and I, I'm just – I go up to Vince Barry, who was the ring announcer at the time, and I'm like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. And then Cody Rhodes came in, and he's getting all fired up, and he came over next to me, and he goes, I don't know about you, but I'm nervous. And I said, oh, God, man, so am I. <laughs> and Kurt Angle came in, and I'm just looking. I'm in one – and I'm just looking, and I'm like, this is what it's all about right here. That was my WrestleMania match. That was the it, biggest. I don't. I don't. I don't think. I. I don't know if I could ever beat that. To be honest with you, and I'll tell you what, those two guys talk about a class act. Mm -hmm. Both of them. Both of them. I remember when they were talking about what was going to go on or whatever. It, oh man, yeah, yeah. It, it was great. And then, the, yeah. And the next biggest match, and this is this might be side by side. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. When I ref for Kenny Omega and Ray Phoenix. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That <laughs> was phenomenal. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm a, I, I was a huge Kenny Omega fan to begin with. And then, you know, they're calling the match or whatever. And I'm standing outside because, you know, I, I, I'm nervous. I don't know. I don't want to just interrupt anybody, you know. And he, he, let me tell you, it's like talking to you. Kenny Omega. Yeah. You know, I was always taught uh, from Bo Douglas, you know, 
you don't bother these guys for pictures and stuff like that. But you know what? I'm I'm not going to lie. I'm 54 years old. I don't know how much time I have left doing this. If I have somebody that, you know, I'm a pleasure to work with, I'm going to ask them for a picture. So I was nervous to ask him. And I went over to him and I said, hey, man, I don't really want to bother you. But, you know, do you think I get a quick picture? He goes, dude, come on, man. Stop that. Give me your phone. And <laughs> took a picture yeah. just like that. You know who else is super cool, man? And I got to work with him a lot. See, now you're going to get me fired up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of, one of my favorites was Matt Hardy. You know why? Because he's real. He's real. That that's That's all, like. That's about the easiest way to explain it. He he's real. The conversations I had with him, they're real. You know. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, man, I've been a lucky dude, man. You have, uh, and, and I cannot believe. And I'll tell you, and anybody will tell you, Kincaid's not that bright. I cannot believe I picked the one match out of probably 1.7 trillion fucking matches that Ref Quinn is ref, I picked that match. I cannot believe it. You did, you did, you did. You did a good job on that, man. Um, <laughs> you know, well, plus, you know, I refed, uh, I refed a bunch of Fury's final fights when he was retiring. He's always my favorite. You know, I, I do most of his matches when he's, when he, whenever mm -hmm. he comes back at product. You know, his match with Josh Briggs was incredible when they wrestled up in uh, Hudson, you know, mm -hmm. and Briggs got a little physical with me and, you know, I got a little physical with him, you know, but <laughs> whew, not go down that road again. Let me tell you something. <laughs> you think that dude's big, like, just looking at him? Be in the fucking ring with that guy. Good gosh. <laughs> giant. I'm not shitting you, dude. Like, I literally come up to his stomach. <laughs> Holy cow. Uh, oh, my God. Boys and girls, this is fucking amazing. It's just like, just friends hanging out, talking, ref Quinn stuff. This now is get, so... Now you're getting me fired up. <laughs> yeah, man. That, that's what we do. We stir the pot, my friend. I mean, I don't know. That's well, what let, I do. Let me throw another thank you out there. Uh, Matt Taven's been very helpful and instrumental in my career. And you know what? Let me just throw this out there real quick. Mike Lombardi from NEW, mm -hmm. thank you. Been very, very helpful. Denver, Colorado, look at the owner of Beyond Wrestling, the man, not the place. Right there, brother. You know I love you. And, you know, Brian Ferry, he owns Chaotic Wrestling. He, you know, I'm a lucky guy, man. And Randy Carver, Randy gave me a shot at a, uh, I met him at a taping at the New England Pro Wrestling Academy. I want to say he was ring announcing. Pretty sure I'm accurate with that. And we just met, and, our, for, dude, for one year, our schedules just didn't line up. It just didn't work. And then all of a sudden, the dates, I asked him for some dates, and I'm like, yeah. yeah. I'm like, oh, shit, this works. Let's do this. Dude, he's a guy, like, he, <laughs> I love working for him, man. I love working for him. I had a huge matchup there a couple months ago. He came to me, he put his hands on my shoulders, and he goes, I need you to kick ass tonight. I go, you fuck, you got it, man. Great guy. Great guy. I think he's like 22, too. Yep. Uh, like the youngest probably promoter in the industry? Could we say that? I don't know about that, but I, I mean, I would say in the area, yeah. And he has a great, I'm telling you right now, Limitless Wrestling has just scratched the surface up there, man. Oh, yeah. Scratch the surface up there. For some reason I say limitless wrestling. It makes me want to say hi to my boys, the mainstay posse. I love you guys. God, we love we the fans love mainstay posse, man. They put on a fantastic performance every single time, and those guys are no joke. We have a blast with those guys. Yeah, we also I'm a Bear Country fan. Uh this is oh. like a quick announcement that I don't think anybody knows. I'm not even sure that this one knows. <laughs> Uh, hey, hey, I have uh, <laughs> Bear Country will be security at our wedding. <laughs> what? Yeah, Bear Country will be security at our at our wedding. So oh. I really hope nobody acts up because <laughs> they have instructions from me because I'm a recovering alcoholic. Anybody gets crazy, just take care of it. <laughs> well, that is something special for me because. I've got uh who man and I am I I don't know about this one. I've got beefcake coming up 
And I call him Beefcake. I don't care what people call him now. I will <laughs> always call him Beefcake. And I have Beefcake coming up very soon. So we're going to talk Ref Glenn wedding security. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tell him, tell him his big brother said hi. I, <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, yeah, but you know what, though? I'm a lucky guy. I get to do a lot of cool stuff. Um, yeah. If I, if I like... I'm sure there's probably, I hope there's nobody I haven't forgot to thank. I probably, there probably is. Um, you know, again, JT Dunn, he's been helpful to me. Rich Bat, all these guys, Bo Douglas, you know, Lisa Lucas. Hey, and soon. It's just been, it's been a great ride. And, you know, when I get back, <laughs> oh, it's going to be like jetpacks on my feet, man. You, you think I was hungry before to get this? <laughs> You know what? If you're in a top spot and you're in a company and I feel like I'm in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, by the way, by the way, MLW. MLW. Hey, uh, Ref Quinn. Uh, again, Ref Quinn, one of the most respected, one of the most. Uh, a lot of people call you their mentor, even from afar, because of uh, your uh, your uh, your worth, your work ethic, uh, the way you hold yourself as a professional. So you being in on MLW, that should be a no brainer, man. I mean, come on. I hear you. I hear you. It's probably that Richard Holiday guy that's stopping me. <laughs> he, you know, he's got a lot. Of, he's got a lot of money. I'll have to call my buddy Hammerstone. You know. <laughs> now that's what we're talking about, baby. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> don't get him. Don't get his name in here. I don't want to get him mad at me. No, 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 no. Let him get mad at Richard Holiday. If you yeah. can get that rolling, uh, please let me know. I'd love to walk. <laughs> but all kidding aside, man, I appreciate your time. Uh, this has yeah. been fun. I, I've never done anything like this. Like, I've been on Leo Connor's show like three or four times. Yeah. Uh, okay. He's a great dude, man. And I'm actually yeah. going to be doing a Skype thing with him pretty soon, too. Uh, cool. But this has been awesome, dude. Like, I like it. It, it. You know, I'm a pretty quiet guy normally. But I have a lot of extra time on my hands. I'm fired up. I want the gym back. I want my wrestling back. I want, you know, my promoters yelling at me about something. I want Fury yelling at me because I'm not at the shoulders or something. Jeez, all, all the, you know, it's funny, man. All the stuff you bitch and complain about when it's not there, you realize you want it back. And I want my wrestling back. And I'll tell you what. I love this girl. I can't wait to marry her. And, dude, thank you for your time. And you, you, this very cool thing you did for me. And I appreciate it very, very much, man. Thank you so much, Ref Quinn, for being part of Zebra Week. You're a very instrumental part of our scene. And I cannot thank you enough. This was Stirring the Pot with Don Kincaid. And as part of Zebra Week, celebrating the zebras, my special guest, Ref Quinn. Awesome, man. Thank you. Take care and have a good night, pal. Thank you. You got it.